Hey folks, Scott Walters here. Welcome to another episode of Project Brutus on the Bulletproof Garage. Today we are going to be cleaning the pistons and inspecting the pistons and the connecting rods. Now, this is a 7.3 IDI diesel, but the process is the same for a gas engine or a diesel engine. So let's get started. Okay, it's time to inspect the pistons. Before we can inspect them though, they really need to be cleaned up. And uh, to clean them up, we gotta get the rings off, all right? So get your ring expander. This top ring, sometimes you can just pop the rings off by hand, uh, like you can with the second and the oil ring, but with the, uh, with the top ring, you really need to use a tool. It is, it is plenty stout. All right, uh, my special sauce here, this is a 50-50. So this is 50% automatic transmission fluid and 50% um, acetone. And the acetone does all the work, um, but it, the ATF keeps it from evaporating. All right, so I'm using a fine or ultra fine Scotch-Brite pad. I don't like to use the green ones. I, I think they're fairly aggressive and I just, want to get the majority of the carbon off the piston so I can get a good look at it you know is there a real reason for getting them spotless yeah I don't think so it might make you feel better but the engine's not necessarily going to run any better um, if you have spotless pistons I mean if you went ahead and polished them I guess it would take longer for the carbon to build up but it's just going to come right back so um, I'm not going to, uh, to spend the time to get them spotless. I just think it's a waste of time. So this is about as clean as I'm going to get it. Yeah, there are a few spots um, here and there, but uh, you know, at some point you got to worry that you're actually move, uh, removing material. So uh, now once you've done that, the next thing is to clean out the ring grooves. And so what you do is you just take a piston ring that you've broken. All right, use the right one for the right groove, of course. And you're just going to run the piston ring through the groove and get out all that gunk that's collected in there behind the ring all right and you'll be able to tell when it's clean um, you know that once the once the ring rides smoothly in there now the worst one is going to be the top ring but you're also going to have some carbon behind the second ring unless it's just a super low mile engine All right, shot a brake clean. Looks like I got a little bit more work to do here. You gotta shake up your acetone ATF mixture periodically because um, if not, it, it'll separate. So you're just gonna be spraying 
uh, straight ATF, I think, because that's what's going to settle to the bottom. All right, the so top ring done. The second ring, as I mentioned, isn't going to have as much, but there's still some back there. And your oil ring shouldn't have anything behind it, but I've got a broken off piece of oil ring here just in case I see some. Okay, and that is gonna be good enough for government work, folks. Okay, time to inspect our connecting rods. This is a pretty quick check, but there are a few things you need to pay attention to. First, you really should be breaking these nuts free by hand. When I say by hand, with just a ratchet and a socket. Yeah, I zip these off. Um, I was in a bit of a hurry, but shame on me, all right? So do as I say, not as I do. Break them loose by hand, because if something is going to take a lot less torque or a lot more torque to break loose, that's indicative of a problem, okay? So, which brings me to my next point, all right? One of the first things you wanna do is you wanna take your calipers and you wanna measure the length of your rod bolts, all right? Now, what you're looking for is the difference. So you're looking for rod bolts that are noticeably longer, all right? They should all be within a few thousandths of each other, but if you have one, two, three that are longer, that means that you've got a rod bolt that is likely stretched and it needs to be replaced, okay? So that's your rod bolts. Now on the big end of the rod, you wanna make sure that you've got a machine surface in here, all right, some cross hatching, and that is the surface that it indicates that your bearing hasn't moved around, all right? If it has moved around, this area is gonna be shiny or it's going to have some high spots looking like they've been polished. And again, that's indicative of your bearing moving around and you may have to have the big end of the rod resized if that's the case, all right? Um, the last thing you wanna check for is you just wanna check around the rod big end to see if you've got any bluing or blackening or discoloration indicating that the big end of the rod has gotten really hot. Again, this is something you're going to see on the bearing as well, all right? Um, this rod looks good, okay? Now it's time to inspect the pistons. Okay, now that the pistons are clean, uh, we can go ahead and inspect them. And folks, these are really nice. Um, you can still see the machining marks all the way up the skirt, all right? It, it, they're really not showing a lot of wear. But what you're looking for here are deep gouges. Um, you're looking for any broken or um, damaged pieces on the skirts. Now, look and see what we've got here. So there's a little bit of a scuff here, all right? And there's some just really minor scratches, you know, and it's stuff I can catch my fingernail in. That is not a junk piston, okay? So don't get all hung up on um, some minor scratches. Remember, you know, that the cylinder wall is cast iron and this is aluminum, all right? So a scratch in your piston skirt is not gonna hurt your cylinder wall and it's also not going to affect compression, right? Because compression is really the function of your rings. So this piston is good to go. Uh, you know, obviously you wanna look at the top of the piston as well to see if the engine has ingested something. Um, we saw in a previous video where it looks like um, one of the cylinders had eaten a glow plug and that it damaged the piston and it had compressed the um, top of the piston down to where the ring was actually hung up, all right? Um, and we'll talk about the rings and the ring lands here in a second. Uh, obviously what you wanna also do is you wanna make sure that your rod moves back and forth freely, all right? You wanna check all, the full range of motion there, no issues there, all right? Um, and you wanna see if you've got any motion in this direction, all right? I'm trying to move it up and down to see if it's rocking, if the piston's rocking on the pin and it's not, all right? So we're good to go there. Um, now the last thing I'm going to do with respect to checking the piston is I am going to check the ring lands. Now, um, this is more important for 
the top ring. That's where you're going to see issues because, again, if the engine has ingested something, then it's going to compact the top of the piston here and that's going to compress that space there. The ring land is going to be tighter, all right? Um, so you would want to run it all the way around and make sure it doesn't hang up anywhere in the motion. Um, obviously, you want to have a clean piston ring when you're doing this, all right? Um, you also want to do the second ring as well and see if it hangs up anywhere. All right, good to go. And um, another thing you want to check for is you want to make sure that the ring, this one has got a little back and forth motion, but you shouldn't have excessive rocking um, in the, of the ring inside the ring land, all right? So you can see it's got a little bit of motion there, and the top ring is likely going to have minor motion as well, all right? But you, you want to make sure that that's not excessive, all right? So, um, and your oil ring, this oil ring is, you know, you're not going to see any, um, any sort of wear damage there generally. So I'm just giving that a quick visual inspection. It looks good to go, all right? So, now I've got to do that seven more times. Okay, folks, that is it for this episode. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to check back for more content on Project Brutus. That's our 1987 F-350 crew cab long bed diesel dually field fine 4x4 conversion project truck. And we'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage.